I'm set. Okay, so we are here with heavyweight Elvis Garcia. Thank you for taking time ahead of your big fight you got coming up next Friday. Tell me a little bit about your opponent you're facing and this fight. Um, so I don't know much about him because uh, my opponent, he, uh, he just got sick of uh, COVID. So I got a replacement. Uh, I forgot his name. I think it was Joel... Local. show show it says like show green or something like that to show, jump. yeah okay so uh, really bad at pronouncing his name but yeah that's my opponent <laughs> well i'm the king of saying names really wrong and just being irrationally confident and just going with it so i definitely yeah. relate to you on that uh give people a little bit of, of your backstory you know uh obviously people think of andy ruiz when they think of mexican heavyweight but you're a mexican heavyweight you got a really good record you're going to be in some big fights coming up. What should people know about you? How did you get into the sport? And what are some some things you want the fans to know about you? Yeah, so I got into the sport because I was just a fat kid that wanted to lose weight. And I said, you know what? Uh, Boxing is probably a little bit the best route for me because I have trainers that would focus on me. And when I, when I went to a regular gym, I didn't know what to do. And I ended up falling in love with the sport and I started uh, boxing and I got pressured into competing. And that's why that's when I started competing and started in a fight in uh, amateur tournaments as many as I could. And uh, I came in, I placed third. I think, no, the, the highest I placed was uh, second in the U.S. Nationals for heavyweight. And when I couldn't make the team here in the U.S., I went to Mexico and represented my uh, Mexico for the pre-Olympics. Well, I'm looking. You have wins over O.J. Lynn Brown, O.J. O.J. Brown, R.I.P. You got wins over Brandon Glanton. You have a, a amateur background, and you also have World uh, Series of Boxing experience as well. So, I mean, you don't, you're no stranger to the sport of boxing is what I'm basically saying is that you, you didn't just come in as a pro. You've been doing this for many moons. Yeah. I've been doing it for a while now and no, it's just a, uh, it's been a journey, a, a big journey. Well, speaking of a journey, I want to know about your journey uh, training with Anthony Joshua and being overseas and just everything about that, because that must've been, on top of sparring an Olympic gold medalist and a world champion, there must've been a major culture shock going to Dubai and being around like ridiculous wealth. Oh yeah. It was, it was something really new to me. Uh, being in England is great. I, I really liked it. You know, I liked the, the way people were treating me and everything. Uh, but when I went to Dubai, I mean, to uh, Saudi Arabia, yeah, it, it was not what I, I was expecting. Like, as soon as I showed up, there was like a, like robes, uh, like mechanical robes where you can pull them out and then you start praying. And it had different times where people started praying. And I was like, wow, that, that was uh, different for me. They, all that and uh, the way they, they treat you. And even then, like, uh, you can't say hello to a female or like just reaching out with your hand, like you just like bow to them because I, I guess it's disrespectful when you do that. And it's just a whole bunch of things. So what is one thing the average fight fan uh, wouldn't know about Anthony Joshua that you think is important from spending time with him as a fighter that um, you think fans might overlook about him? Um, the technique. I think a little bit about his, uh, he, he's, he has a really good IQ when it comes to boxing, uh, when I was sparring him, he threw out like the first, first two rounds, he would like, uh, just kind of figure me out. Like, uh, he would adjust, he would like, he would see what to take out and what to put in. And that's like one of those things that, that really like separates from other fighters. That, that composure to be able to just kind of react to what you're doing and then start to step on it later. Uh, I guess now let's shape it to you because you're here, you're, you're fighting and you're a good fighter. How, what did you learn from being in there with one of the best fighters of this decade, Anthony Joshua? How do you take that into your fights, knowing that you've shared the ring with one of these um, high-level fighters? Well, 
I, I learned a lot, especially from the from the coaches around him, the work ethic. That's one of the biggest things that I learned from him, his work ethic, uh, and just the way he took care of himself and all that. I took it with me and made sure that I could uh, I can emulate some of the things he's doing because there's a reason why he's up there. I think I think one of the unspoken rules of boxing is one of the successful formulas is you have to surround yourself with successful people. Exactly. It's not just about just being talented. You have to a see what successful people do and then be able to know that it's possible and then bring that into your own system. I think that's one of the hidden gems of boxing is being able to do that. Yeah, um, a lot of people think that it's just yourself. Oh, if you have it, you have it, but it's, it's not that easy. You have, you have to have so many people behind you that are going to bring you up to that point. So you're, um, you're taking this fight. I believe you're with Debella entertainment. And, um, uh, what's your goal in the near future? Do you have any short-term goals, long-term goals? Um, you know, probably like, uh, financially, like, buy houses buy a home and stuff like that that's basically my my other term my short-term goals uh start a business but when it comes to boxing i really do want to i want to represent my home state i want to bring my state 